Great. Um, now you have done refinance sample step one and step two. <coughs> now let's look at this and click on this one. Make sure you save it as a step three and then you rename it and save it. Okay. So then we're going to make some changes to this. All right. So what you do is same thing. Go to the right bottom uh, end of the screen and click edit. So once you do the edit, you can see that, okay, I have entered the step two, now it's step three, and I've entered the information, I know the condo. We know that actually this date, that what the customer said, they think it was 2015 is incorrect, right? In fact, it was bought for 2006, and which was the date? 0822, right? I think the, the month is not so important. It's usually the years that is very important because it goes into the calculating the regulatory requirement for refinancing and how many years you can do. Okay, that's important. Okay, so once you have done that, uh, we click that down and then we uh, run through the same things and we do a preview. Okay, so we do a preview. It still shows as 23 years, uh, but once we do a preview and we uh, we go back to edit, right? So uh, we have I value done. So it's always on and off, open and close, right? Toggle. You click on the toggle, it's close or open. Then the next one, you go to the uh, refinancing, the TDSR. You click open or close. So you open this TDSR. Immediately, you see that loan tenure updated to 21 years due to limitation of maximum tenure. Why is that? Because earlier, we have put in 23 years and that is what the customer think it is or what they think they could do or it could be under a previously different um, system or different tenure structure. So when you click this one, it shows that it can only do 21 years. The system automatically force you to do that. And why is that? When you click on this, it has the for age 42 years old and the other age 49 years old, right? So that is very important now. Earlier, we went from 23 years now to 21 years. And incomes could have been changed uh, over the period of time. Let's say this person who earns, uh, who is 42 years old is earning uh, $4,500 with an annual bonus of $9,000. And this person is 49 years old, is uh, self-employed um earning a, a notice of assessment which is the annual income of 150,000 okay and then let's put that into perspective suddenly you see that loan updated to 15 years due to limitation of maximum tenure why is that all right that's because of um, our system automatically calculates for you the weighted income average age right and then we run through that report again and when you run through that report, you would see, uh, assuming we don't change the valu valuation, we just assume a lowish valuation of 2.4, right? Uh, it doesn't affect the refinancing amount because the refinancing amount is too small, right? Doesn't matter, right? We, we won't worry about that for the time being. So you run through the valuation, the actual transactor prices, and so on and so forth. They say, aha, to refinance 820,000, I have no problems. I have 42.55% TDSR, which means I pass. In fact, I could potentially borrow 1.156 million or refinance 1.156 million and I will still pass, right? Based on the income you input. And you could also similarly reduce the loan to 10 years, or you can reduce your income. That means one that you can lose your job and lose some income and you'll still be fine, right? Then what is the income breakdown? You see that the person's uh, the one that is forty two years old, right, has a four thousand five hundred monthly fixed income, fixed salary, plus a nine thousand dollar variable annual bonus. Whereas the one who is forty five nine years old is hundred fifty thousand uh, notice of assessment, right, self employed maybe. So this is the uh, haircut 70 percent recognized, thirty percent haircut. Okay. So then you realize that. The weighted average age is tilted more towards the 49 years old because the one that's 49 years old earns more money than the person that's 42 years old. So it's not exactly in the middle. So it's a little bit skewed towards the, the person that earns more money. 
And earlier we thought it was 23 years, but no, it's not 23 years. And then later when we adjust it, uh, when we didn't clean any income, it becomes 21 years. But when, the moment we clean some income, it becomes 15 years. So immediately you will see that 23 years become 15 years. So customer will, will be like, okay, what is my monthly installment? How do you know the monthly installment if you don't know the time? Of? There's no way you can know that, right? So you need to have all this information in order to do a more comprehensive and professional assessment of the uh, refinancing. All right? And how would that look? You will have a private residential where the tenure cap is 35 years. The maximum age cap is 75 years old. And the number of years of financing is 30, 13 years. Most of the time, how do you know that? There's uh, years of financing is 13 years. Look at that. We go up to this part here. And then you see that um, the property was bought on the 22nd August 2006. And today is um, 2020, right? So that's exactly uh, 14 years uh, or 13 years ago. Was it 13 years or 14 years ago? Yeah, so that's like 13 years ago, right? So the system says that when you bought it, you have a, a, a loan and now you still have $820,000 loan. So you have actually financed it for 13 years, all right? And then how does the system calculate it? It is actually using the... Let's do a sticky pad here. Let's do that. It's actually using a max H cap of 75 minus current age, current weighted income, average age, which is around, I think, 46, right? Minus years of financing, right? Which is equal to 13 minus 1, right? For buffer. Minus one year, right? So what does that give you? 75 minus 46 minus 13 minus 1, that gives you a maximum tenure of 15 years, right? So if you don't have this information, where, where it's bought, when it's bought, uh, the system doesn't give you, you can still find out uh, or from the system, key in the address and find that out, right? The system should have... Uh, this kind of information, especially for private properties. If not, you have to ask the customer if it's a HDB, okay? So you have this information, then you can finally calculate what is the tenor. And if the tenor shortens, right? If the tenor shortens, right? If the tenor shortens too much, what will happen? You will be faced with a high monthly repayment and you may fail PDSR okay because if you are forced to pay everything within a shorter period of time what will happen your monthly repayment will go up if your monthly repayment will go up that means your TDSR will increase and it may fail okay so that is the critical information that you need to know, okay? And I haven't even considered about any loading, if any, right, of uh, the situation, right? So then you know that when you look through that, then the savings analysis may change because it's uh, shrink over a shorter period of time. And then the uh, monthly installment, principal monthly paid, uh, principal uh, interest or uh, interest monthly paid is actually changed right and all the packages are being put here okay once you have done that remember to do a save okay and then the same thing happens right go through that uh, will be the other information uh, that you can need to explain to your customer and you can see that the dynamic of this will, will be dramatically different because customers say oh I thought I only paid 3005 or 3006 or 3007 how come I'm paying 4009 now? I don't want to refinance. Even though it may be the best option for the customer to save money, but they, they don't want to come up with that kind of money. Hey, the savings is $12,000, right? 
or the savings is estimated fifteen thousand dollars they don't want to do it all right so there there you go like if sometimes the customer may not want to go into um, savings mode and where it cost them too much short-term pain in the form of high installment but the system will force them to do that because it is naturally a refinancing and there is this kind of rules in place okay so that gives you a more comprehensive understanding of refinancing that's the end of part three